For the noble fair Buddha told you Biko was ambitious, and if it was so, it was the grievous fault, and grievous Biko answered it. Here and the leave of Foster and the rest, for Foster is an honorable man. So are they all. Yeah. Men. I speak what it is true, what Foster had said. I speak what I do know. You all laughed him once and not without cause. What cause is also to protest against his death? Oh, judgment. Thou art fled to the Fabutis peace, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin, there with Biko, and I will not pause until he comes back to me. Mm. But yesterday, the waste of Biko might have stood against the world, now lies it there, none so poor to deem reverence for Africans. If I dispose to tear your hearts to meet him and rage, I'll do foster wrong and declare wrong, who you all know, honorable men, but I rather choose to wrong myself with you than to wrong such honorable men. <coughs> Under your pardon, we must not decide. We have tried the utmost of our friends. Our leaders are brimful, our cause is right. The enemy retreats us every day. We and the heart are ready to decline. There is a time to the affairs of men. Taken at the flood, this one to fortune, omitted all the voids of their lives. He bound in shadows and in miseries. On such a full sea, I will now afloat. We must take the heart and join ourselves or lose our venture. Oh, pardon me, thou in peace of earth. That I meet and gentle with these punches. Thou art the rings of the noblest men that ever lived in the tide of times. Who to the hand that shed his country's blood? All of thy wounds now do I prophesy, which all black blue believe to bear the voice and utterance of my tongue. Now, I see the word there to colonize. We are colonized by the British, we are colonized by settler colonialism, we decolonized. That's why I put a, a black state today. Eh? We, we colonized. But what we failed to get rid of is coloniality. A coloniality is the template of oppression that they uh, uh, that they uh, buried in you. You are sitting here thinking we are an African, and yet we are just a very bad photocopy of Western. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, suddenly, uh, my neighbor there. Uh, 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 who, who, whose name uh, was Ilokuku? Uh, 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 now speak up, Kuku is now precious. Uh, uh, pure and as gift. Uh, we reject ourselves wherever we are because coloniality has settled you know, in us. Here, up in South Africa, in our universities, we they are run by generals. It is highly militarized. The very same thing that the apartheid regime itself has been doing. And the mentality of the people that even control your own you know, kind of state handed towards those uh, you know, things. In other words, when colonialism settles in any country, the first thing they want to do is to paralyze and to disrupt the culture of the people. Yeah. Once you disrupt that culture, you are gone. The first thing that goes is what? Language. Isn't it? OK. Give you an example. Yeah. Guys, you are educated. Yeah? How many of you here are intellectuals? <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever people called me, hey, Professor Ntuli is the top intellectual. You see, normally I walk like this. When they say, Professor Ntuli is a top intellectual, <laughs> not actually realizing that by calling me an intellectual, you are neutralizing my spirit, you are neutralizing my feelings, you are neutralizing my body, you are only neutralizing the mind, which is what the Western world offers you. Today, when you say decolonize the mind, it's a radical statement. No, it's not. It's a reactionary statement. It is operating from within the Western academy itself. You don't just decolonize the mind. You decolonize the spirit. You decolonize the, the feelings. You decolonize the body. This is not just the mind only. We are trapped. We are in there. Okay. You for the phone, isn't it? In my language. What's your name? Hmm? Yeah, what to do Zile on a phone? O professor to li on a phone in gas. iPhone 6. You phone in gas. That gas in my phone tells that my phone is an awesome phone. At home, you know, cozy. 
Non dota? Let's look at the word umfaz. Constructed out of two of the most powerful concepts in the world, the concept of death and the concept of knowledge. Those who die knowing why they are dying, because they live knowing why they are living. They will start to say, stop failing, do everything in anticipation. While Tina and Abos put Charlie, Lapa, Situ Hosa 1, Hosa 2, and Mrs. January, the next door neighbor of Mrs. February. That's what we do. And yet, we come to hear that a man is the head of the family. It doesn't come from uh, 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 North Africa. Genesis 25. <laughs> Genesis 25 says uh, Abraham, uh, the concubine, who was more important than other women, her name was Ketura. She was an Ethiopian woman. When you go to number t uh, Numbers 12, they say um, Miriam. And, uh, and, and, and Aaron laughed at Moses because Moses had married a black woman who was Zipporah. King David was sniffing behind Vatziba, the queen of Sheba. Behind every Judaic prophet, there's a black woman. But your history doesn't tell you these things. You, you read your Bible even wrong. <laughs> Isn't it? All right. I want to get the phone. Right, rear air right now, right? Now the phone, how do you come in the uh, speed? Yeah. And then I, 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 I add another one. I add another one. I add another one. I add another one. Another one. Oh, guys, we are wrong. Oh, I, I, I think I must leave. I must leave. You can't even count up to ten. You know, when you come over to five, six, seven, you are no longer adding. You are symbolizing. How do you baby? You are subtracting. Robo, we are subtracting. How do you sue me? You are dissolving. Did you know that? Wow. The secret of ancient wisdom is in words and they are forgotten meanings. Yes? Now, if I wake up in the morning and I see to do zile, I say, hey, no one can do do zile. Ubu taga, taga. Ume ubu taga, taga. What do I do? I take it to inyanga. Inyanga, yo wenzani, yo taga, yo taga. Imiti, mwa ebu taga, taga. If inyanga it taga wrong, wenzani ya taga, taga. And after we are cured, as Jabuli says, Zani, si You can just imagine that any act of decolonization or issue of decoloniality has got to start with language, which is the highest expression of a given, of a given culture. Professor, in my language, the word knowledge is uluazi, six letters. What are the first four letters? Ulua. Ulua. He or she fights or Ulua. Or you fight. Z is knowledge. Knowledge is that which we have to fight for. That's what you tell me. Yeah? When I hold this, I say, Kinise, Kinisa. Hold on tightly. Kinisela. You know, persevere. Kinisela. Be truthful. If clearly so, is that you must persevere for, hold on into. The language tells you the philosophies implanted up in it. And yet, you are the one saying, hey man, brother, man, wait back to me. What's wrong with you? So, I'm just going to cut off the wind up. I don't want to go up into anything. Then we'll engage uh, uh, with the issues of questions and, and answers. So what has happened is that colonialism disrupted our cultures, disrupted our, uh, our languages. We ceased to become the subjects of our history. We became the objects of uh, somebody else's uh, uh, you know, history. And as a result of that, then we need them to carry out here in South Africa a cultural 
revolution. Without a cultural revolution, we are going to be ruined, renated, gone, finished, and done. Mm -hmm. My father was a priest, right? And when they're busy killing people out in South Africa, I pray. No, I know I don't pray. No, those days. I, I mean, in those days, I I I, I used to pray. <laughs> now I discovered. Now, now I discovered a new way. Uh, that I no longer use the word uh, you know pray. What I do, I send a knee mail. <laughs> I send an email to God. Yeah. But after all of these shootings and the massacres, I decided one day that I am going to break diplomatic relations with God. <laughs> it has nothing to do with God. But this training of mine uh, or about praying was there. I decided that I'm going to pray and I chose that this time I'm not going to pray to God. I'm going to pray to our prime monster, whose name was Peter Bluebwater. <laughs> Peter Blue Water is my shepherd, I am in want. He maketh me to lie down in street corners, he disturbs my soul for apartheid, saying, Yet though I walk through the very same shadows of inflation, I anticipate no recovery, for he is against me. He is in the reduction in my salary, he increases my VAT, I am an over, surely unemployment and uprising shall follow him all the days of his administration, as I claim my AK 47 forever and ever. Yeah. Can everybody say ratata? Okay, beloved, um Obama just told me that he's not gonna uh, be with us, he apologizes. It's not going to spend the whole session here. And I would just like to give only two people if they wanted to get any clarification of what he has shared with us. And if not, otherwise the program will follow. But I, I, I think, okay, in that, uh, uh, can I have another hand? Let me get a female, please, you know. I got a brother there, so let me get a sister. Okay, right there. So, brother, you go. The cultural revolution that you speak of, can you just, in terms of just articulate its, uh, its form, is it that it would be bringing that linguistic discourse that you were highlighting into um, the education paradigm? Would that be its kernel? Uh, what, what, what form would it be the cultural? Not, yeah, it, it is well. You cannot also conceive of a cultural renaissance outside, uh, uh, I mean, uh, of a revolution outside a cultural renaissance. And the cultural renaissance is about the reconstruction. What are we reconstructing? We are reconstructing the institutions of ours that we're working. We are renewing our interest. We are remembering the dismembered uh, 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 you know, people. We are redefining ourselves. We are reimagining uh, ourselves. It goes beyond language. If somebody or some country were to bomb South Africa today, future archaeologists, when they carry out their digs, they are going to think that South Africa was a white country because of the bloody monuments that, uh, uh, that, that populate uh, uh, in our country. So talking about the cultural revolution, one is to say that what is it that uh, we are? How do we organize our, ourselves and organize our lives? It was to start, Mr. Uh, Ngara, with uh, the understanding cyclicality in Africa as an organizing principle. Right? What happens? When we go and drink, we don't sit in a straight line like this, like you sit in your pub. In my village, you sit in a circle. And then we've got the calabash. Shape, the shape of the earth, isn't it? Yes. When you take it up, when you take it like this, mixing your own beer like this, that calabash of yours is uh, doing a rotation as the earth rotates once in 24 hours, causing day and night. When it gets on to you, you pass it to the next person, it starts a revolution. You start being nice and sober, you get great and you become nice. <laughs> Different seasons, you know, take place. You go over to 
the church of Apostoli or of Isaioni. We are going to be in another second, isn't it? The priest will be standing right in the middle. But even as we 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 we, we worship, we are rotating. We are imitating that. We are imitating the earth. But you are not doing it like this. You are doing this. At the same time, you are doing your own kind of a revolution. Right? You go to the, uh, the Shebe church, Nazareth, white stones, they are always a circle. And then you young guys, when you get over to your disco, you go alone, right? Somehow, when there are black people in there, they are going to end up in some circle. <laughs> When we end up into that second, someone goes over, we are dancing in the middle. Once you overstay, once you overstay, somebody comes in and, and, and chucks you and chucks you out. What you don't actually realize is that these people want to rule Africa forever. They are absolutely wrong. That dance is about saying, when we are here in the center here, no one is far away from you. There's no nepotism of your cousins. We are all at equidistance. So when I move in and I drive you out, I must come up with something that is exactly better. See, you see the You dance and allow anybody else to do so. You don't monopolize that power. So the issue that for offer a total cultural revolution is for us to rethink ourselves afresh. Right? We have got to delink from uh, where I mean Western uh, uh, epistemologies uh, or their the, the Western you know, kind of uh, uh, no systems. We have got to delink uh, uh, you know, from uh, there. We have to carry out a whole series of uh, uh, epistemic disobedience. If at all we can just all disobey Europe, guys, we can be a big. <laughs> yes. 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 How do you reconcile? Wait, wait, wait. You know what? I can see someone ask. Ah, but I want to ask. Sisu, I want to get some help. Sisu, Sisu, Sisu. Did you see the name? Yeah, I see already asked. He's led by his feelings. How do you reconcile cultural revolution with human evolution? Professor, we are at a stage where we are trying to re reimburse what we have lost, and evolution is already here, and there's technology, and there's this cluster of all, if everything in one. Where do we reconcile the two? Yeah, this is, again, that's where, again, we are trapped in, in Western thinking. In Western thinking, is either or, yes and no. In African worldview, it is yes and no, and something else. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, it, it is not just a, 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 a binary. Uh, you can evolve while you revolve. Yeah. They are simultaneous. Where you could natural a plant that uh, sting you and get a rash on you, next to it there's a dog plant that when you take it and you wrap it onto it, 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 it kills that. That's how the dialectics of life uh, in, in operate. Mm -hmm. um, Professor Ufumumek, about the power of words. Um, the next challenge, you touched on in the room, but you didn't go very far with that. You lead her down that path, you um, because it's, it's become such a dirty word. Yes. It's used in such a, a derogatory way. Um, but we don't really understand the power that lives within that word. Can you take us through that? And then can you take us through how we can regain <coughs> the power you know, of, of our language? How, how do we get that back? So I mean, what you actually do right from grade R, you have to start teaching uh, your children in their language. How many geniuses here in maths and in physics uh, that fail simply because they are poor? Uh, they are poor in a language. You know that is it. Did you see? Uh, uh, I'll answer your question. Why were we colonized? Why did they bring Christianity to us? They said Tina, 
we are idolaters, we worship idols, isn't it? And they said we are enemies. What do we mean by an enemies? We mean to say that we believe that the stone has got consciousness. We believe that the tree has got consciousness. We believe that the dead things have got consciousness. Today, quantum physics tells you the same thing. Uh, we, were, we were colonized because we are barbaric, because we love art. But doesn't that sound a little bit bad? So now, when I was saying that the word for a woman is constructed out of two of the most important concepts, the concept of death and the concept of knowledge, isn't it? So we are the ones who make our, our words dirty, ordinary words that are very clean and neat. We fill them with the knowledge that comes actually from uh, 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 you know, from, uh, you know, from, the, from the Western world and, uh, uh, and, and, and kill ourselves. Now, when you say, for instance, women, when to, you go to the Western world, the women, eh, we organize the stock fairs. When somebody is sick, the women are the ones that are doing practically everything and men want to make money and chase other stuff uh, as well on the side. Uh, <laughs> Whereas, when you look at a, a woman in, a, in an African sense, actually, of the way, if you can quarrel how much with your husband, tra traditionally, it's not the wife that leaves the house. It's the man that must go up and stay somewhere, uh, that, that must go up and stay somewhere else. How did we go so radically, uh, I mean, wrong? You, you know, in it. Because at one moment, we closed our eyes and we forgot uh, uh, I mean, who we, who we were. Let me give you an example. Einstein is said to be the cleverest man that ever lived. Simply, this theory of relativity. Uh, that there was space and there's time. Then he concluded that there is no space and time. There is a space-time continuum, isn't it? That's it. That makes it the most radical thing. <laughs> no, me. As a guni, uneducated, I know that in my language, time is what? Is it? Kati. Space is um kati. So um kati, and this kati is indivisible. No. I don't need, you know, Einstein. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I just don't uh, need That's that. Right. It is built uh, in, in, you know, into it. Uh, how uh, uh, many of you here? I was standing outside here. One was saying, hey, uh, Umagre, I, he is a beautiful woman. How we interchange he and she? Uh, how, how we interchange he and she? That indivisibility uh, uh, is built in it, and we are accused that we do not understand the, uh, the, the language that they used to oppress us. Thank you, Mark.